Let's find out if there's something interesting and new in COD's recent intel about their matchmaking process. To start things off, their recent conversation about the matchmaking process is referring only to multiplayer and it's being continued for Warzone and Ranked in the near future. If you want to read the entire blog, then click on the link in the video description. The matchmaking process in general is a process with multiple factors that are being run in a specific order. First and most importantly, there is the connection that is being assessed. Call of Duty states that they try to find the best connection for your personal location so that you have the best ping possible, basically. There is kind of a twist though, which I will refer to in a second, but overall this sounds uplifting. Following the matchmaking process, the next step is the time to a match. So a time you have to wait to get into your match, considering your lobby's numbers of players and in that perspective their ping. Call of Duty explains, if the wait time in a lobby is excessively long, players typically recycle the process by cancelling out of matchmaking search and restarting it or even quitting. This does not quicken the matchmaking process and in fact can be detrimental. And right there is a twist. If you have to wait for too long time to get your best connection lobby filled, then the matchmaking process starts all over again at step 1, so the connection. But with the exception that it looks for your second best ping, if that makes sense. And if that's not going to help, then it will do this over and over again until connection and wait time and even the following steps of the process fit together. I don't want to blame it, my pings are in general around 20 to 30, but there are a lot of examples where the ping is much higher and people legitimately yearn for a better connection. So talking about connection being the most important thing when it's just not is kind of a bummer. What do you think? Are you willing to wait even longer to get a good connection or are you down for a quick game regardless if the connection is not the best? Furthermore, COD talks about the Rustman playlist, which is kind of intriguing to me. They state that players often left the lobbies or matches early on because the majority were hoping for shipment instead of rust. And that's why the backfilling prioritized rust over shipment, so players felt like rust was disproportionately selected over shipment. That is very interesting and somehow explains why playlists come and go. This is a good example of different understandings of the community and what they feel and of the depth that have the insight in numbers and change things because of that. This is why communication plays such an important part and can't be stressed enough. The third and last step in the matchmaking process is for all the other factors. Playlist diversity, recent maps and modes, skill and performance, input device, interesting, platform, so PC or console, interesting, and voice chat. I find voice chat is kind of interesting here too, although it just states that it only considers if voice is enabled or disabled, I kind of believe that if you're using voice chat more often and have it enabled, it puts you into a lobby with other players that use it too. That could lead to a lobby that is communicating even better, so players that use it to coordinate their tactics and engagements. This could affect Warzone more than multiplayer. But it is worth keeping in mind if you're looking for squads that communicate much better. Now let's head over to the probably most discussed part, the measuring of skill for the matches. We all know SBMM is out there, but we really don't know to this state how it works in detail. This is what Call of Duty writes on their blog. Skill is determined based on a player's overall performance, kills, deaths, wins, losses and more, including mode selection and recent matches as an overall metric across all multiplayer experiences. Skill is not only a factor in matchmaking players against appropriate enemies, but also when finding teammates. We use player performance to ensure that the disparity between the most skilled player in the lobby and the least skilled player in the lobby isn't so vast that players feel their match is a waste of time. Our data shows that when lower skilled players are consistently on the losing end, they are likely to quit matches in progress or stop playing altogether. We also understand that many high skilled players want more variety of experience, but often feel like they only get the sweatiest of lobbies. We have heard this feedback clearly and will continue to test and actively explore ways to mitigate this concern. Hmm, interesting. First of all, we got the confirmation that skill is assessed by a KD and wins and losses, as well as mode selection and recent matches. 
and more. What that means we can only imagine. Speaking of disparity in the lobby between good and bad players, I can only endorse that. Speaking of only losing or winning, this is where it gets interesting. What are your experiences? I think for multiplayer it works just fine. For Warzone it's a little different and I'm curious to see what they have to say about this in the future. Overall it's a lot of verbiage but not really something that gets into the nitty gritty of the process itself. Which is kind of a shame considering the overall good move of starting this conversation with the community. But that is just too flat and I am glad that COD announced more detailed information about that subject. Wrapping things up, the COD staff informs about assumingly most popular community questions. And they write as follows. Hey Call of Duty, does Call of Duty consider player engagement, time played, as a factor in matchmaking? The short answer here is no. Hey COD, does the Call of Duty matchmaking process impact any in-game elements such as hit registration, player visibility, aim assist, damage, etc? Short answer again, no. Hey, how about spending money in Call of Duty content, such as bundled, battle pass or black cell? Does it change how players are matched? And this is kind of interesting to me, because there were players out there that felt like experiencing this after they purchased something in the game. And there are even rumors about it in terms of EOMM, so engagement optimized matchmaking. But the answer here is, money spent does not in any way, shape or form factor into matchmaking. And I believe that too. Hey Call of Duty staff, does Call of Duty use bots in multiplayer matchmaking? I don't know why you would think about that ever, but the short answer COD gives is just no. But hey, do partners or content creators get special consideration in general matchmaking? No, but they do in specific cases, such as events like COD Next, which is just reasonable, I think. But um, how about have you ever considered an opt-in opt-out system for matchmaking algorithm? Hot says, our data suggests that splitting the player base with an opt-in opt-out matchmaking system will have negative consequences on the overall player pool. And what about have you ever tested removing skill as a consideration from matchmaking? Cut says we have run tests over the years to determine if removing skill as a consideration from matchmaking makes sense. We will continue to launch these tests periodically. To date, the data remains consistent with what we detailed above. Players tend to quit matches or stop playing if they are again blown out resulting in a negative overall experience for all players in the lobby and the general player population. We purposefully do not disclose when these tests occur because it may impact feedback or the data we see during the tests. And I talked about this in a video I made, SBMM is always something good. You gotta be crazy if you want it to be removed, but it's still questionable how it really works and if it hits too hard. Oh hey Cod, have you considered removing skill from matchmaking in specific general multiplayer game mode? Hot answers. We have considered this in the past and we will continue to examine if this idea makes sense as part of an experimental playlist or in specific modes. We have nothing to announce on that front today. And that's it. Nothing really really new, but I think it's a huge move by COD to stay on track with their communication with the community once again. Although there isn't much new in it and I wish they would dive deeper into specific topics, COD is at least transparent. So is it the entire process we see here? No, but it's a good way to start things off, especially if they want the community to be part of their franchise. Things can be questioned and they win a bit of their engagement with the players back. So let's stay tuned when they talk a bit more in depth. And if you don't want to miss out on that and any additional content, I'd love you to hit the subscribe button. Have a fantastic day. Bye bye.